The Ghost Man Show on AlpianRadio.com A village row in Runhill, which led to a witch hunt, is a tale of neighbourhoods falling out on a petty dispute. In the village of Runhill, at the time of Matthew Hopkins, is still feared as a witch hunt find a dreadnought. Thomas Cowings alleged in 1679 that a local woman, Anne Diver, had put an apartment on his cow, with which his family, he said he acted after he refused to give him some, uh, some herbs. He was gone, and after refusal, he broke his leg and his wife and daughter both became ill. As with many similar cases, other witnesses going to come out of the woodwork with their own stories that Dan poor Anna. John Cafey claimed his illness a year previously led him to a cunning man who turned had shown him the image of Anne Driver in a glass, a case of which condemning a witch. John Castleton, who d- distributed money, left a gift to the poor. The parish chose to give Anna less than she had given the year previously. It said to have been warned him she he would take less heed. There's at least some mischief came to him, or well, is. Elizabeth Plutz went further back in a bit to outfield the fire. She claimed in 1673 she bought a goose from Diver, and was then ill for four months while she ate it. Francis Bill decided to give Pitts a run for her money, he told the Pharisees that in 1669, four decades before Cunning's claim, she refused to give Anna some beer a hot summer's day. Then she drank the alcohol herself and fallen ill for three weeks. Above all witnesses were outclassed by memory, a servant, Susan Major, who rummaged in the attic for time, bring out a story that was twenty years old, involving a diver going to her master's house to beg some meat for her father. Before the meat could be brought out to her, diver changed her mind and claimed she was too proud to take it. A week later, Susan fell ill losing her sight and ability to speak and suffering from strange fits. In the diary of those who disappeared adds further flesh to the story, the case of Spectre Witchcraft in this case, we were peddling witchcraft with counter magic. When Thomas Cussin believed that Anne Driver had bewitched one of his master's girls, he threw a horseshoe with seven nail holes into the fire. Elizabeth Pitts made an instant recovery from her bewitchment and threw thatch from above the door of Anne Driver's house in the fire. Daniel Jakes, another victim, chose another pot of measure and went to a cunning man to seek help. By the time that Anna was accused, witches in Britain spent a year in prison for minor offence and dealt for his death in the second, within 50 years. The same crime could be dealt with, the same penalties given to vagrants and con artists. Across the channel, however, the witch trying to be were burning out of control. In the same year Anna was accused, the witch trying witch trials, again a hundred people were killed of the few period in France. Pepe Goulotin, alleged witch, witch, French witch accomplices, were burned at stake for witchcraft. As for Anna, the trail runs cold. She's faced in court, leading to a hope she lived to annoy her neighbours for some time to come. The Ghosts of Agagisin Kai Balawe Said to be home of demons and devils and ghosts. The most prevalent tale is that of Blackwater, a tale of Stepwell, once held in Blackwater with ties people towards it. Legend has it the black evil water drew in many people to jump from great heights of the, to the, of the well to their own deaths. Though this water was now dried up, the souls of these one, which claimed it were said to linger with the step well, tracked for all eternity. Many people have become more quite suspicious of Alagasti K K Balal A G G R A S S E N K I B A O L I believing the Palace where evil lingers. Some claim to feel as though they've been followed by visiting the set world despite there being no one around. People experience this phenomenon are unable to shake the feeling 
Well, at the state well. This is no matter where they stand or how fast they attempt to outrun the feeling. People have also experienced issues with their hearing when standing in the deepest parts of the world. Apparently countless people claim to hear disembodied voices when no one's around. Interestingly, some claim that at the same opposite end spectrum hearing nothing except that natural silence. It's an interesting piece of uh, history and architecture. It's Bolton today. Visitors can enter Stepwell for free during the day. Explore at their own leisure. Care must be taken as it is a little bit unsafe. UFO. Father Gill in the 1959 Papua New Guinea UFO sighting. 1959 Papua New Guinea was still the charity of Australia. On June of that year, Father William Gill, Australian Australian Ministry, and 37 members of his Bo- Bo- and I mission, made, he made notes of that experience. The story has appeared in the po- August. During the day before the sighting, Gill composed a letter to Reverend David Burry, acting principal of St. Adderdale's College at Dolgore, accompanying a report regarding UFO sighting made by Stephen Moray, assistant teacher at Gill's mission. Dear David, having a good look at this extraordinary data, I was convinced about this visitation period. There have been quite a number of reports over the months. From reliable witnesses, but too little thing about the most recent reports, the UFO seem to be stationary at Bol- 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 Bolan Atari, or to travel from Bolan Atari. The Mount Puday vicinity seems to be a hovering area. I myself saw stationary white lights twice, same night or night of April, but a different place each time. I believe your students have also sighted one over the Bolan Atari. The assistant district officer, Bob Smith and Mr. Gover, have seen it on some on similar ones on different occasions again. Other Bentari though I think Bentari people said they watched it travel across the sky from an odd direction. I should think that this must be the first time that a saucer identifies as such. I don't know doubt that doubt the assistance of the, these things. Dida cannot know now that I've seen one myself. My simple mind still requires scientific evidence until I set the, the form of an outer space theory. I'm inclined to believe the, pro, the probability that many UFOs are likely some form of electrical phenomena, perhaps something brought about by atom bomb explosions, etc. That's even actually made out of source of could be a molecule of the unconscious mind. Very likely that sometime it'd been in illustrations of some kind of medicine. A possible that you do exist. A next letter reply. Dear David, life is strange, isn't it? Yesterday I wrote this you a letter. I still intend on sending you. Expressing opinions that I read I read of those. Now less than twenty four hours later I changed my views somewhat. Last night we of Antari experienced about f- about four hours of UFO activity. Though no doubt absolutely they are hounded by beings of some kind. At times it was absolutely breathtaking. Here is a port. As indicated notes, Gill set a right right light in the northwestern sky. Peter approached a mission hovering about a hundred meters up. Thirty eight people, including Gill's teachers, Stephen Gill, Moray, and Elias Vratare and Mrs. Nelly Nestle Moray, gathered to watch the main UFO, which looked like a large big disc object Apparently solid and circular, wide base and narrow up deck, upper deck. The object disappeared, have five legs underneath it. It also appeared appear to have four panels, portholes inside the object, which seemed to glow a little brighter than the rest. A number of intervals of the object produced a shaft of blue light, which shone upwards in the sky at an angle about 45 degrees. What looked like men came out of this object, it seemed to be the duck on top of it. The four men, occasionally two, then one, then f- three, then four. The shafts of blue light and the men disappeared. The object then moved through some clouds. There was other UFO sightings during the night. Gill described the weather as variable sky, scattered clouds, and 
to clear at first, becoming other cars. He estimated the height of the clouds about 600 metres. First sighting of the sea, according to Reverend Gill, seemed to be about 130 metres above the water at all times. Astonishing narrow survivor put in a repeat performance the following night, June 27th. Here is Gill's statement. Large UFO first sighted by Anna Leary, 6 p.m., apparently some position at last night, 25th of the 6th, 59. Also seen a little smaller, but WGB, WGBG, sorry, at 6 2 a.m. I saw at least cold analysis and several of us stood to open and watch it. Although the sun had set, it was still quite light for the following five, three minutes. What figures appear to the top of four of them? No doubt they were human. Possibly the same object that looked at the mother's ship last night. Two small UFOs are seen at the same time stationary. One above the hills was the mother overhead. On the large one, one of the figures seemed to be doing something. The centre of the deck was casually bending and raising their arms, though adjusting or setting of something not visible. One figure seemed to be standing, looking down at us. I stretched my arm above my head and waved. To my surprise, the figure did the same, and at least both 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 arms over his head and the two outside figures did the same and he himself began waving our arms and our four, all four now seemed to wave back there seemed to be no doubt that our movements were answered all mission boys made their own will gasp as dark was beginning to close in I sent a quick co-co-darare his touch was dessert direction a series of long dashes around towards the UFOs. After a minute or two of this, the UFO apparently acknowledged by making several wavering motions back and forth, waving by us and repeated this, followed by some flashes of, to- of the torch. And the UFO began slowly to become bigger, apparently coming in our direction. It ceased after mi- perhaps half a-, a minute and came no further. After a few, few further two or three minutes, the figure apparently lost interest in us. Then they disappeared below deck. At 6 p.m., two figures reappeared and carried on whatever they were doing before the interruption. Blue spotlight came on for a few seconds, twice in succession. Kill was described how the mission and people called out for the men. He was shouting them, beckoned them to descend. With no response beyond that was already noted. The two smaller UFOs, I up, made stationary by 6 p.m. The scene remained largely unchanged. A girl, of course, he went to dinner. At 7 p.m., no, number one UFO was still present, but it appeared somewhat smaller. A group of observers, observers went to Church of Eve's song. After even a song, of visibility was very limited. The sky covered in cloud. Nothing else was seen that evening. At 10.40 p.m., a very penetrating, ear-splitting explosion woke up people on the station. The satellite came from just outside the window of the mission house. Gil felt it didn't sound like a thunderclap. Nothing had been seen, but the whole sky was overcast. Uh, other less compelling activity occurred the following night. It, it seemed that Ben Ferrari visitors stations had gone. Magic and supernatural in Korska occur. The evil eye. Bala do chuka ju. The evil eye is responsible for various maladies, especially those of children. It's always looking the way in. It's enough to praise a child without adding, of course, may God bless him or her, for the eye to take hold. People are too satisfied and conceited, also potential victims. The sensation Average pride before a fall. Exes of the UI are known as Saradore. They are female healers who practice a precise and curious ritual. After crossing themselves thrice with their index finger, they dip the hot oil with a lamp in cold water, a deep plate in mogulables or oil fail to co- coagulize. It's evidence of the evil's presence. A matter of incarnations a sturdy eye went about till it forms a single blob and the eye is left. Senior Dory can transmit their secret knowledge informally, orally to an apprentice. 
On Christmas Eve, while the church bell rings, in some places this period extends to the new year. Mazari, Dream Hunters Mazari Rome at night, armed with heavy staff, known as Mar- Marzai. Curiously, they often sleep, seen asleep, about the same time, during their internal wanderings. They kill an animal, a face they see, but a person known to them, while they inevitably die within a short time. If the animal is only wounded, the person condemned may fall ill or suffer an incident, but will not die. Most of each seems choose whether they're calling or they neither they're calling nor the victims. A well they might be shunned by their neighbours. They live alongside them, although somewhat remotely. As Mari only was released from the vacation when ex- for exorcism by a priest of iconic rite, and must stay but well but surely date back beyond Christianity, prophesizing with a sheep bone. Christians have a strong belief in destiny. Predicting the future is simply foretell. Normanic shepherds spent long periods of the summer isolated from their communities. More claim to suicide. They stripped they stripped a snow sheep's shoulder blade of skin and flesh and held it on the light, till rubbing it at the same time. The sun shining through the bone showed a fit vision of the future. Apparently, no known in herdsmen predicted that the terrible events could rise and fall in the podium. The UFO squadron sighting in 1973 when a professor, Marek Lerick, a professor, physics teacher of ethical polyvetic allegor Montepec in the 1970s, along with his member of the investigation team, UFO Quebec, didn't see a whole one UFO, they saw a whole fleet. Lerick decided to investigate and witness a squadron of UFO flashes across the sky from south to north. After a fun, uh, cra- a fun array of calls of individuals, San Bruno. The effort of vocality of sightings, the wit can de- commentate the UFOs move as quickly as a shooting star. Lake of Bas- Baskaton was sighting in 1978. Yet again, by Mark Novak. Two citizens of Il Poret went camping at Villa Varendari Park on Saturday, 11th of March 1978, by Lake Bassetong. They seemingly, then seemingly out of nowhere, pair spotted an object, fell out of the sky, set them in a fit of fear, fleeing in the sea. Once they drew recovered their wits, they returned to the lake, only to see that it said, what they said was a UFO silently hovering over the water for about 30 seconds. The town of Mont Royal, citing 1985. At 1 p.m., Mordred and her, hus- her husband were sleeping, only woken by a sound like hundreds of firecrackers. He set off with her above her home. She and her husband went to the bedroom window, their, face, uh, their faces very apart, only to see a fireball, red fireball, low in the sky, moving deliberately northwest. She said that it very seemed like a very bright beehive effect lit up the sky for an hour and a half. Intense noise reported described like gunshots and firecrackers, occupied by static from hundreds of radios. Not alone in sighting as air control traffic at the centre of the Baville Airport reported two other individuals called in between eleven PM and one PM, both concerned about red and white oval like Object. The place Bonavite Venture incident of 1990. It began on the evening of 7th of 
1990 at 7.20pm for a woman swimming in a rooftop pool downtown hotel saw a large light emitting object in the sky. A chain of anxious thoughts began. The women reported a sighting up to a life a nearby lifeguard. They then told a security guard, then got in touch with the press newspaper, reported to the police. From there, the RCMP military, Davel, member of our airport officials, and even NASA were contacted. None of them which could explain the unidentified flying object. In a feature conducted by CBC, the police officer has seen an event described seeing a gigantic metallic round object that protected beams of light in the sky. The same was seen by all oncomers with a sighting lasting nearly three hours from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. 10 p.m. The spirit trumpet began paranormal. The spirit trumpet, spirit trumpet began the science scene in the 19th century, popularised by spiritualist religion Jonathan Coombs in the cabin of his farm in Athens County, Adoro. He built a fantastical spirit room wherein guests could witness three public sciences conducted by Coombs and his family. A Baron, Baron Hodge for musician and spirit communication device collector. According to the medium who used these tools, the spirit who could speak for possessing vocal cords, a person speaking to the trumpet, too soft spoken to really be project to the spirit room, the dead could quote all this sound of religion help they could get. While in use, these trumpets were supposed to float around the air, buoyed by the power of fighting energy. According to the psychic researcher William Jackson Crawford's investigation to 1990 collection, Experiments in physical science. The first spirit trumpets were homemade either out of metal or carbon, resembled narrow cones. Took, they took off a priority and became fancy, including steel trumpets that extend to contract via sliding segments that slotted in one other like tubes in a jointed telescope. One even spoke of glow in the dark rings at the end. Everett Elkwood Echo was perhaps the best known of these. Turned out the first commercial version is a tin shop in Anderson and Indiana. First you would sit down around and circle, pray and perhaps sing a prayer him, all in rap- of absolute darkness. Then there's the sun and spirit would rap on the floor and that's present, ranging from sight not to tremendous blows that shake producers' chairs. Soon after the table would elevate the bait the cage has been around a side, turn sideways. It's only after this fun fair would the medium trot out the spirit trumpets. As soon as the spirit left the room, the trumpet would come crashing down. One seance, two spirit trumpets swooned around the room, uttered in a range of nameless voices, and ordered living guests to sing something and turned the gaslight away from the psychic, a wish of the very private ghosts, of course. A haunted tale from Facebook. A mum from Houston said she had a haunted Isadol. She explained that the, uh, her daughter's doll was starting to freak her out when he began singing and talking Spanish while switched off. Her and her husband began to throw the, decided to throw the doll out. But since then it's found its way back into her house. Not once, but twice. We threw it away weeks ago. We found it outside on a wooden bench. We weeded it out and totally wrapped it up in an old garbage, garbage bag and put the garbage bag inside another garbage bag, filled it with another garbage, and put it in the bottom of a garbage can, and leave a bunch of other bags of garbage and moved it to the curb, collected on garbage day. The family went on holiday, thinking the whole thing was behind them. When we turned, the dog was back. We got out and forgot about it. The girl says, I, Mum and I saw the Elsa Dale back again in his backyard. After throwing it out, it didn't work, and the lady decided the only way to get rid of the thing for good was to send it far, far away. She posted to a friend who lived 1,500 miles away, been detained by a tale of a haunted dog. She confirmed Chris has since received out. The doll and taped a creepy toy to the bonnet of his car, 
stop it from going anywhere else. Psychic medium Chloe Bow believes that she can communicate with the mum beyond the moved on. She says when she was four, she experienced a spontaneous after death communication with her deceased grandfather. At such a young age, I held no concept of death and no need to feel comforted due to its loss. Yet, standing in the rich cemetery one day, I felt my grandfather's dad's spirit come close to me. So strongly, I became overwhelmed with the urge to pass on the message from him to my nan. In the message, she called her a nickname, only she knew. The experience stayed with me for life, shaping my beliefs about life after death and leading me in a quest to explore spirit communication, relationship and science behind it. We have to deal with the death of a loved one at some point. Because of this, most common question put to me, how can I recognise myself? When I'm deceased, one's draw near. Here are the following signs from my book, of Dead or Dying, the teachers. Most common form of communication signs, feathers, birds, butterflies and flowers, be the most common. But when I heard people talk about unusual signs like anchors or octopus, a sign used to be called a calling card by spirit loved ones, they often draw attention by sign by spying your mind to notice it. Maybe a feather appears in an unusual place like a door. Even no windows are open. No feathers on their upholstery. A feather once appeared in my hand at the dining table from nowhere. The important sign is now how it makes you feel. If you feel discomfort, don't dismiss it. Purely wishful thinking. You may be dismissing the golden opportunity to sense that your loved one's presence around you. Dreams. It's common to see people, spirits, and loved ones in dreams. Spirit dreams are night visions, are lucid and often feel difficult, different from usual dreams, often leaving you to convince true experience. If you are have like to encourage them once to teach reach out to you, make a point at bedtime or making them kind asking kindly to join you in your dreams. You may speak to your thoughts out loud or say them quietly in your mind before falling asleep. Keep a pen near your bed and if you receive a response, make a record of it. Get creative. You can even write a pad note before bed and see if you see the answer in your dreams. Channing, sit with a pen close to your hand and ask a question of your loved ones, quietly in your mind. They allow you the mind to stay, find full still. Resist in the urge to think what you are right, overthink what you're writing. Pick up your pen and allow words of wisdom to flow with you into the onto the pages. When you stop writing, read it back. Does the wisdom words like sound like advice the loved one will give? Is it helpful? Is it something you've never thought of? Meditate. Not always approve physical health encourages well mental well being. It also spends awareness. As it learn and still the mind brainwave patterns on the altered and may, may achieve heightened states of awareness. Over time we have become sensitive with heightened concentration. Many people discover they are able to see flashes of insight and contact with see relatives. Ask for help. This is a simple tip, tip but important one. The loved ones in the spirit world actually like to be helped after help. It lets them know you're okay with revealing yourselves or unseen, offering unseen support. We have free will, and they are not able to railroad yours. Let them know that you're happy for them to guide you, and let them work out how best they can do that. Let's go to the expectation and simply keep an open mind to response. Trust your senses. Spirit communication is often use our senses. To alert our, our soul's presence. It's common for people to smell familiar perfume, specific to a particular loved one, where walk in past and then disappear. Oftentimes, sounds are used, invisible bells ringing or hearing music playing about a source of common experiences. If you happen to you, trust it. When the bird are dying to teach us, lessons learned from the afterlife by Claire Broad Watkins Book. You've been listening to The Ghost Man Show on AlbionRadio.com. I brought you more paranormal and a little bit of UFO news. As usual, I like to mix it up a bit. Why not? That's me drinking water, which I shouldn't really do because it's technical. Dead air. I've spoken, I've said about dead air before. It's not some unusual ghost that I should, should not be speaking about. 
It's just the term when it, nobody, nothing's happening on the radio. It's called dead air. So, thank you for listening to the Ghost Man Show on LBRadio.com. <laughs>